Sam. Max. And Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Sam. Max. And Alan. I seen that. And you guys have the YouTube channel Nitpicks. And you guys were on a couple weeks ago to talk about 13 Reasons Why. And we're back. And you're back. Back, baby. For us, there's been, like, no time has gone. <laughs> you guys think it's been a week? It hasn't. <laughs> I've just had, I've just, like, rolled another ticket and we're ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, I, I don't remember if it was during that podcast or before... Uh, when you're telling me you guys put a punch, a bunch of effort into your video about the defenders. Bro, you yeah. picked a good subject because yeah. there's a story behind this video. Yeah. But yes, the defenders. Yeah. The defenders is, uh, the, the Avengers of the Netflix Marvel series, yeah. right? So you got Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist all coming together in their big. Hand. <laughs> yeah. They're big time, like they're the big series that it's been building to for four or five years. Yeah. yeah. And it was awful. Oh, was God. Awful. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we basically, what we mainly, what we, we sort of do, our, our branding and all that is, um, we sort of, we criticize Netflix shows and we thought, oh, Defenders is the big, it's the yeah. big Netflix show. I mean, like, year. I really want, I got Netflix to watch, like, Daredevil. Yeah. And, like, I've, I also, moving up, I really, I really enjoyed, like, all the singular series. I even really like Luke Cage. Like, people don't like Luke Cage. Mm. I think Luke Cage is sick. I hate um, it. And it's you, a, I really like it. Yeah, I think it's just got a sick vibe to it. I, I would have um, liked it if it was six episodes. Yeah, no, it, I mean, bloody hell, the moment they bring in Diamond back, that's... Oh, God, Diamond oh, back. bloody Diamond back. He's trash. Oh, I hate him. <laughs> but um, Cottonmouth was cool. Cottonmouth is, like, a, equal equal as a villain to, like... Kingpin. The Kingpin, yeah. as well as, like, David Tennant's Kilgrave. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I was really excited for Defenders. <laughs> and it was dreadful. It was really it was bad. Just, it, it's the biggest... <laughs> The biggest well, insult of Defenders is just how, like, average it is. And it's forgettable. so mediocre. It, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Average is a strong but, word, I feel like. Like, <laughs> it was, it was so disappointing. Before, before we get into that, let's, can we go through the singular series first? So let's, yes. What did you guys think about Daredevil season one? Ah, oh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, absolutely fantastic. I don't really think, Daredevil season one to me is like one of the things that defines what can can make a great Netflix show. Yeah, because like it was just like a, one of my favorite renditions of a comic book character. I think Daredevil. I've always said this. I think Daredevil is like the best Batman we've had on on yeah. like the screen. Like in terms of like comic book Batman, Daredevil's yeah. the closest we've mm-hmm. got to comic book Batman. Mm. Uh, except he's blind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But like so, it, and so like it was great. Like just the story moves forward really nicely. It's good fun, and then like basically the big thing that really makes it something like special is like it's got some of the best action like ever. Those like singular shots where he's just beating the, like the crap out yeah, of everyone. Yeah, those old boy esque shots. Yeah, and you really see the power behind every punch that he gets, yeah. and, and also he delivers. And it feels like raw and gritty as well. Yeah. Like and he, you really feel like Daredevil's like a vigilante. Yeah, and he was vulnerable. Yeah, which is exactly. something that they don't do in a lot of comic book movies or Abs- shows. He yeah, absolutely he got damaged, he got hurt, he was in danger a lot. I loved season one Daredevil. It was it's yeah. it's definitely in my top three if it's not my number one comic adaptation on the screen, movie or film. No, yeah. Like that's totally of a And it's like if you've say. read Frank Miller's Daredevil as well, it's so it's it basically just takes the core of that. And really expands it. I mean, um, Kingpin as well. What like what oh, great yeah. performance? Yeah, Vincent great. Onofrio. He yeah. did. Yeah, he yeah. Was great. So, they're brilliant, and like the it, it was great because it was like everything had time because it was a TV series. The super these superhero stuff had so much time to develop, and you really grew to like love these characters and just found. I just I thought it was great. It did have some issues. You said the first, you don't like the pilot very much. I don't do think you? the first episode. I think the first episode is very generic. Like that's my my problem with it. Like it doesn't have uh, any of the like really great stuff that's in the rest of the show. And there's also one episode with um the kids where he where he has to get the kids. And I thought that one was a bit 
weird. It was a bit plain as well. Yeah. I think just what makes Daredevil great is just the 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 multi layered villains and also just the action sequences. And um, when it doesn't have either of those, it sort of be a bit be a bit plain. Yeah, I really hate Karen as well. I, just, oh, I really yes. <laughs> yeah, she is really annoying. So Foggy was too, uh, but less so. I don't mind Foggy. I like Foggy. Oh, he's yeah. better than um. He's better than than John Favreau. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we nearly made a video comparing the Ben Affleck movie yeah. with the series. But <laughs> what's the point? Because I do quite like the director's cut of the movie. It's yeah, a, it's, it's a, a guilty pleasure of mine. I don't know if I've ever seen that. I've I've seen the, the the theatrical release, and that was enough. Uh, I mean, no, I love no. the fact that Daredevil has an unironic use of "Wake me up, wake me up inside." But um, did the, you guys just harmonize, or was that just one person? That, that was we harmonized. We harmonized. Yeah. That um, was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. We um, spend too much time together. <laughs> this, um, this episode is considerably lighter than our 13th episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That was a yeah, bit. Daredevil isn't as dark. I think as Hannah Baker Mason's would life. be a really good Daredevil villain. Oh, there you go. Am I putting the wig now? Uh, yeah, I, I, I re- yeah, I think Daredevil is just so solid. Like all the origin stuff as well is really well done. I was going to say about the movie. Yeah, you should check out the director's cut. Everyone the listening to this cut. should watch the director's cut of the original Daredevil film because they. They fix so much that's wrong with it, um, and there's some really great scenes. Um, they give Matt Murdock actual character, and there's one scene in the movie where he's on the rooftop with um, Elektra, and it starts raining, and he hears someone like crying out for help, and Daredevil decides to have sex with Elektra instead of saving <laughs> that person. But in the director's cut, he leaves her. He goes, no, I've got to go. And then he goes and like say, which like, of course is much more honourable to the character yeah, of Daredevil. Yeah, no. So they fix a lot of stuff. It's worth watching, especially if you got that Daredevil first. It'd be funny if that was uh, Uncle Ben. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that he didn't save. It turns out to be. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> That's it. It ties in. I really wanted. I really wanted the Tom Holland Spider Man to be in the Defenders. Yeah, I thought that, been, yeah, I thought that was going to happen, but it, it it didn't happen. I don't know. Obviously. Are they crossing over? Do you guys know? I, I, I don't know. Um, there's been rumors, hasn't there? Well, basically, what it is is there was a picture of um, I think it was um, the actor who plays Daredevil and Tom Holland on set together, yes. and that what made everyone really excited. But I think they were just hanging out. <laughs> I just sure. think they were filming anything, doing the vibes. Um, but yeah, uh, should we move on? Yeah, yeah. We yeah. can't just talk about Daredevil the whole time. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. Jessica Jones, right? Jessica Jones is next. Um, Sam hates Jessica Jones with a passion. I do really hate it. I, I I did not like the first half, and then I got into like I took a long break. I took it wasn't until uh, I think Daredevil two was coming out, and I was like I should finish this so I know what's going on. And the, my second, the second half of it, I actually really enjoyed. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the. I can appreciate Jessica Jones for a lot of reasons, and like the re- I've realised I'm a, a very small minority that hates Jessica Jones, so I'm not massively confident shitting on Jessica Jones on your podcast. But like, <laughs> I think you should. I think <laughs> okay, let's make it spicy. <laughs> okay, I'll make it a bit spicy. Look, David Tennant Kilgrave is amazing, and like yeah. it really saves the show. Because um, if it wasn't for him, it would be really bad. But yes. um, he. He does such a good performance. What really annoys me is that they kill him because he would have been a really good Defenders villain or yeah. like a really good villain to keep going. Or even going. a Marvel villain. Or just a general Marvel. He would have been great in a movie. It also yeah, doesn't like, seem like killing people in Marvel matters, though. I guess so. I mean, they might just make him go full on purple. I was that kind of expecting him to go full cool. purple by the end, but he didn't. Uh, I just My problem with Jessica Jones is that it sets itself up as this noir, noir-like detective kind of tone and then it doesn't stick to that and i would have really liked it to do that uh, i felt that jessica never does any detective work at any point and i thought that's what sort of that's almost like a su- equ- equivalent of her super strength and like you know agility is that she's also really intelligent and can you know be a detective yeah they but like she- they put it forth that she's just so good at it she doesn't have to try which makes it really boring to watch 
Absolutely. Yeah, because detective work is actually meant to be really hard. Like, I know this from personal experience. I was actually, I had a short stint as a detective. Yeah, Max was a detective. Uh, yeah, and I solved, like, so many murders in that time. But it was really hard work, and I just don't feel like they're representing us very well. Yeah, he felt un... <laughs> a, well, even a the person. Sherlock, the first episode of Sherlock, when they, like, break down all the thoughts he's processing and, like, showing yeah. how he's figuring stuff out. Like, even him yeah. took effort did to it. figure it out. We did a video on Sherlock as well, so I'm just <laughs> going to plug that very quickly. <laughs> Sherlock, Sherlock. Sherlock video, check it out. Yeah, but no, um, yeah, very, there, there is very, I mean, it basically ends up kind of like abandoning the whole noir thing and just being like, it, it, I think it just tried to emulate what Daredevil was doing just without the good action sequences. Yeah. And with a different theme. That guy, that police officer who got like really roided it up. Like, what was that? Yeah, that was weird. The her crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't think I like this show that much. After all, I, I might be cha- You might be changing my mind. The I, I, haven't I, even, I haven't even started. There is some. <laughs> there, there is that really good. There, there's that really cool scene where they get Kilgrave in like the in like the prison cell and they take his parents there and then he makes them stab each other. Yeah, yeah. That means cool. every Kilgrave is great. Like, every scene with Kilgrave is really good. Yeah. But then when you look at the side characters, like, that roommate who gets really angry and, like, keeps and yelling. The and, heroin addict and guy. And she's, like, incestual relationship with her brother. And then, like, the, yeah. the like, ad- who also lives. And they have a whole subplot. They have, like, a lot of time dedicated to them. And there's that, like, one scene where they're on the boat together. And I'm just like, what? What is this? Why do I care about any of these people? <laughs> like, I don't care. <laughs> yeah i think no you make a good point i think it was i didn't like the first half because kilgrave wasn't really established at that point and it was yeah. towards the yeah. second half where he became a character and that's kind of yeah, when i started liking it because everything else you're right is ridiculous it's because yeah. jessica jones also suffers from that symptom of like let's just make her edgy yeah like oh let's make her drink whiskey stray and yeah. she's really back talky and she wears fingerless gloves and so you know she's legit <laughs> and she doesn't care about anything happening she doesn't give a <laughs> shit she doesn't care but it's like a character that doesn't care about anything happening and but then really cares about one thing like obsessively amount is like kind of n- not as nuanced as like even Luke Cage, like, no. like, and Luke Cage is a pretty crap character, but like, yeah. but like, at least he does have like some some real motivations. But like, Jessica Jones is like, Kilgrave is bad. I'm gonna stop Kilgrave. And when you compare like, that to Daredevil, thirteen as a episodes, character, it's like miles, miles of like difference between them. Yeah, and I think the... what really frustrates me is that they spend such a long time of her saying, "No, I'm not gonna kill him. I'm gonna get him arrested. I'm not gonna kill him. I won't sing to that level. I'm not gonna kill him." And then the last episode, she's like, "I'm gonna kill him," and then she just kills him, <laughs> snaps his and neck. Like, how how is that? <laughs> you just told us for twelve episodes that killing was bad, and now you're just gonna kill him, and we're supposed to be okay with that. No, you're right. Uh, Jessica Jones is not a good show. Kilgrave is a great character. <laughs> the show is is pretty bad. Uh, moving on, Daredevil two, right? Is that what came next? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I think. I no, think, I, no, was it Luke Cage first? I think it was. Daredevil. I think Daredevil uh, two yeah. came first, and then they rushed okay. Luke Cage and Iron Fist. After yeah. that, yeah. Um, so season two, like, I liked it. Yeah, no, it's fun, and also like the hand is sick in Daredevil yeah. season two. Like they're set up in such a cool looking way. They're like these actual ninjas who can control their heartbeats. Yeah, they have actual like swords and like, I think, look like ninjas. But the main the main drawback to Daredevil season two is like the Electra plot yes. isn't as strong. It's you got two plots. You got Punisher and Electra, and like the Punisher stuff is sick. Yeah, like really cool. And the dynamic between Daredevil and Punisher is like really interesting. And because it's establishing this theme that's always current with Daredevil, but it's emphasizing it in such a really cool way about like the vigilante, the line between being a vigilante and what's good and wrong. And that relationship that he has with Punisher is is really interesting. Yeah. And so when you go over to Elektra, all that serves to do is like set up hand stuff and yeah. like the defenders and the hand are pretty cool, but like you're more interested in the Punisher stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like come on, go back to Punisher. Come on. Why well, don't Yeah, I just <laughs> wanted Punisher season one at that point. I didn't I like <laughs> Daredevil Which felt like that- it was slowing down the Punisher story. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and what's cool is like all the Punisher stuff, like 
it's like beat after beat. It's like he does this, and then like he has an interaction with Daredevil. Then he gets arrested, and then they're defending him. It's like they're constantly putting him in different circumstances, and it's really interesting to see him in them. And then there's that really like sick scene where Punisher is like killing everyone in the prison, yeah, and like stabbing oh, them. Oh yeah, up, and, and then like... Kingpin comes and sees and then that, him. Yeah, that's yeah, really good. That's episode. so good. Yeah. The, where he meets Kingpin, and Kingpin's just ranting at him. Everyone's freaking out. It's brilliant. Yeah, and it, then you go back because Punisher Sorry. is kind of. He doesn't. He's just kind of a one-note character, but they really layered him in yeah. the show. You know, like it, he just he felt very real, even though well, the, the, a huge part of his the reason that he's like so layered is because he works so well in contrast with Daredevil because they're effectively doing the same thing and they come from a similar life. But Daredevil is is taking that heroic role, whereas Punisher is much more practical. And it's like, look, let's just eradicate all the bad people. Yeah. And so that contrast and then their philosophical discussion that they have on the roof is like very interesting. Yeah. And well, at one point, like, Punisher's just like, well, you think that like breaking all their ropes is like, makes you better than me. Like, I'm just like, they're still not going to walk for like yeah. nine months. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I wish that would be... I don't know if you guys watch Arrow or Flash, but I wish that would be the conflict between those two characters on the CW. We, yeah, we were going, we thought about doing a video on them, but we just realized like, it's just kind of a bit, we thought it just looked a bit cheesy and yeah. like, a bit. it kind of like serves its audience like fine. Like, no one who watches The Flash really wants it criticized because they know it's not that great. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Like, yeah. No, no, yeah. there's no one walking around going like, The Flash is the best. Yeah. Like, no it's the greatest great. show in the world. <laughs> Flash is on the same <laughs> level as great. Bad. Yeah, like, no one. It's just like <laughs> these kind of fun, like little. I I tried to watch Supergirl actually. I tried to watch Supergirl and that was dire. <laughs> I really, <laughs> I, used watch, I used to be really into Smallville actually. I watched I Smallville like, too back in the day. Yeah, I think it was like on the same level. It's just on the same level of Smallville. Like let's just make like twenty episodes a season, like low budget. Like yeah, yeah. we're we're referencing some comic stuff, and you can be like, oh, okay, this is kind of. Like whatever. Except for the Flash and Arrow, it seems to own its like superhero roots a little bit. Yeah, more. yeah, because it's not like before they were superheroes. But like, yeah. I've seen some clips, and I was just, I was just like, this is just a bit cheesy. Like, it's a bit of cheesy schlock yeah. to like watch, which is fine. Like, yeah. you need a show like that. Yeah, yeah, I um, like to have it on in the background when I'm doing other stuff. Like, if I'm cleaning or something like that, I'll like just toss it. Yeah, on. yeah. But other than that, yeah. it's not something I That's- sit down and like try to break down. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think Daredevil's like on a higher level of that. Yeah. Which is, you know, Daredevil is just very cinematic. Well, because what, what makes all of these singular shows, even Jessica Jones uh, yeah. as well, the reason it makes it work is because they really have these good themes. They've got soci- sociological, cultural themes that they're always tackling in their shows. Yeah. And that's really engaging because the exploration of those themes is just very interesting. And that's why the Electra stuff doesn't work as well, because the moment we're going to Electra, there's no longer that exploration of themes. Yeah. And that's why Daredevil is like, the first season is very good because it's actually exploring his themes and his relationship with the vigilante life and his relationship with criminals as a whole. And yeah. the Punisher stuff, Punisher stuff is like more of that, but more clear and more in depth. Yeah. But the Electra stuff strays away from that. Again, it's just a bit too long, really. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, they would do, I would, they would do well if they did like, two episodes at a time over a season like every week instead of doing everything in bulk release like yeah. two and do an eight episode run over the course of four weeks or something like that you know not yeah. whatever it is As 13 a, or yeah it's yeah. A, it, but all the all the marvel episodes like series now are just like too long and it seems like the last episodes or the final stretch it seems to be just trying to extend the length of the series as opposed to like actually we need these scenes in here one way or another with jessica jones we didn't need the beginning stuff yeah and with daredevil season two we don't need the ending stuff same with i mean and the electra stuff isn't garbage like it's still good it's just not as good yeah Yeah. and his romance with electra is exploring his origin more but we got that in season one really so that's that's all the flashbacks are kind of fun Yeah. yeah yeah And so, and then we'll Luke Cage, talk about Luke Cage. Should we do Luke Cage? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, for me, Daredevil 1, then 2, and then Jessica Jones, and then Luke Cage, in my order of enjoyment. And they just slowly yeah. decline with each season, it seems so, like. See, I really like Luke Cage a lot. I think we both yeah. really like Luke Cage. I put yeah. Luke Cage on the same level as, like, probably Daredevil season 2, even yeah. though the final switch is bad, but like, the best thing, in my opinion, about Luke Cage 
is like the character of Harlem and the world that he inhabits is absolutely great. Like seeing because with the progression with Luke Cage is like his dynamic as a character is pretty straightforward. Yeah. But what what we have developed here and the best the best thing about the show is his relationship with Harlem the city. And as Luke Cage progresses and embraces his hero role, we see his relationship with Harlem get better and better. And that's so interesting because Harlem is just this great little like city that's so nicely visually com- conveyed, but also with the soundtrack, it's like boosted even further. And, and the little extras and characters yeah, in and Harlem, all they all like have like sort of a sense of like that harm. Hum, harmonious like kind of like, yeah like community spirit it's like yeah. this like really cool like urban ecosystem yeah that luke cage like comes into and then suddenly like disrupts yeah and like is there to try and make better and then obviously we've got the dynamic of sort of cotton mouth is the representation of like that dark side of harlem and then luke cage in the barber shop the guy in the barber shop like his mom yeah. yeah pops is like the representation of that good side of harlem yeah. and the struggle to bring it back to that like great community atmosphere is like really fun yeah and it's it's cool because luke cage just serves as the embodiment of that yeah and what like what i like about luke cage as well is that the very first episode is so slow like the, the first episode is like they're in a bar it opens up with them in a barber shop for like 15 minutes just chatting and then they go to the club and it's just like it's just like this is going to be slow we're going to focus on characters we're going to let it breathe a bit and like after seeing Daredevil season two, which was very much like action scene, action scene, action scene, ninjas, ninjas fight. It it actually was like quite nice to just have like a world built in front of you. Yeah. That but, being said, though, yeah, it does have <laughs> problems. It does have big but problems. As a yeah. final, I just think like Harlem as a whole has a lot more nuance as an as a location to orient than even like Hell's Kitchen in Daredevil. Like Hell's Kitchen is just a horrible place. Yeah. But like Harlem is like you, you can kind of see the city and the city they live in feels very alive, which yeah. is like really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I I think it should have been a movie on Netflix. The same with Iron Fist. Like it should have been specials popping up to promote Defenders instead of being a full series. Because my issue yeah. with Luke Cage was every episode felt the same. Because he's He's a really boring superhero. He is so boring. He is really boring. I mean, when he's introduced in Jessica Jones, I was like, Jesus Christ, he's so boring. He just is like, I'm Luke Cage. And he's just there. And he's it's like, me, Luke Cage. And he's like, no, my wife died. Like, oh, like, You're fun aren't you? It's like, what is he, what is he doing? Like, I think the first thing he does is he puts like a he like, her, like, diamond a cutter to his stomach. He's yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, so, see? Yeah, uh, he, he doesn't have a huge amount of charisma. The <laughs> way he fights is he kicks a door down, and then he stands there with his fists clenched, gets shot a bunch yeah. of times, and then he starts pushing people into walls. And it's like... Yeah, he starts throwing people about. Yeah. <laughs> and it's this, like the I same... Like they, it's I this, like that they own... Sorry. No, no, no worries. I was just going to say no, it's the makes, same thing in every episode. He has the same fight scene over and I, over I, and over again. I, I think like I that. think as well like expectation and hype related into our enjoyment of Luke Cage because yeah. when it came out like it was really shat on like no one everyone was like this is garbage it's not good like all the reviews were really insulting and I think it's I don't think the Netflix series have really recovered massively from that just no. initial backlash against uh, Luke Cage yeah. and I we left it for like a month or yeah, something ages. and then I was like oh yeah let's watch it I've got some time and I was like actually like this is pretty good yeah and I, re- I remember I text Max and I said seriously watch watch Luke Cage it's like Daredevil except he has absolutely no stealth and just comes in and like knocks everyone out <laughs> <laughs> just comes into a building full of guards like armed guards and just destroys everything like Cottonmouth has this huge empire yeah. <laughs> and like Luke Cage comes in and dismantles it like within one episode <laughs> yeah. just wrecks everything in an episode it's like really fun and cathartic yeah and um uh, and Cottonmouth is like a villain as well. I just yeah, thought he's was really sick. cool. He's like really when good. he comes into the barber shop and he's getting shaved, and he's like, yeah. "There's nothing like a good like fashion shave." And yeah, like, kind of. And it's just like, oh man. And then his relation and his sister's cool as well. Like, oh, I don't like, know his I sister. Know. What do you think of his sister, Alan? I did not like her. I don't oh. remember why. I didn't like much about this show. Um, <laughs> I, well, Alan's. Racist. Alan's just a racist. Yeah, I told you guys already. I've I've already admitted to that. 
Uh, <laughs> but no, the it felt like homework. It, the, the show felt like homework. Like it felt like I have to watch this to know what's going on in the stuff that's coming up. Yeah. And it made me like it even less because it wasn't doing anything interesting. And it was just, I felt like it, every episode was the same thing. Like, like I was saying, I think if it would have been a, like a, like a, like just a one episode or, you know, a two hour movie or something like that, because Netflix can do whatever they want. They don't have to have full the long series. series. Yeah. But, cause they could have, estab- they, they could have established this character and told that whole story much quicker and more condensed and it would have been a lot more interesting. I agree with you on that. I mean, it did actually, they did shoot the show and then they were like, it's going to be a movie. They actually yeah. said it's going to be a movie. Yeah. And they were like, well, you know, I'm glad that Netflix can put their hands up and be like, we don't have enough good stuff to yeah. make a full show. And then they made a, and show. Then they made a show anyway. <laughs> uh, I mean, so, Luke Cage's origin is really crap. Also, well. yeah. And and also, can we, talk, can really... we talk about how, like, the Night Nurse is oh, oh, God. <laughs> in every series? The She's Night Nurse is shoved in there. Yeah. Shoved in there. And, like, progressively getting weirder and cringier. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And the fact that she had a romantic relationship with Daredevil, Daredevil. and then Luke, Luke Cage. Cage. Like, if, if Iron Fist hadn't, like, got to, um, got to Colleen so quickly, I reckon, I reckon, you know. They would have gotten together too. <laughs> giving her a pop. <laughs> <laughs> she was attracted to superheroes. How, so how is she connected to, uh, to, uh, how is she connected to Jessica Jones again? She was. She was at the hospital yeah. and with Luke oh, Cage. Really? Yeah. yeah, like he got shot in the head, and she was like, "Oh, I can help him." That wasn't. So, that wasn't Jessica what? Jones. That was the only interesting yeah, that was, that part yeah. about Luke Cage in my head. That I was like, "That's the only redeeming thing about his whole series," but that wasn't even in his series. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, I think the, I think the sister character, like Luke, the Cottonmouth sister character. Because she was trying to be the senator, this like good person. Yeah. And then like I would have liked it if there was this idea of like, oh, now she's head of the family and she's going to be even better than Cotton mm. But like she just kind of falls apart and then gets Diamond back in and then yeah. kind of disappears. And again. that that's the big problem again. It's like Luke Cage. Once Cotton Mouth dies, it becomes really trash. Bad. Yeah. It becomes pretty yeah. bad. And it, it suffers from a similar problem with all of them. It's just too long. And it's Diamondback long. is like weirdly Luke Cage's brother. Yeah, that's so looks dumb. like a really weird freak, and then goes around going like being yeah. really like it's on that, that weird costume. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what was that about, man? That does not work. <laughs> Well, oh. getting, so if I think, if Luke Cage should have been a movie, Iron Fist should have been a five minute YouTube no. spot. Like, here's his story. Iron Fist should have been two minutes on YouTube. Iron yeah. Fist should not have been introduced. <laughs> no, yeah, they could have done his entire story as the first episode of The Defenders. I did. Yeah, I, I didn't. Just... Okay, I didn't like Iron Fist, but I'm going to defend Iron. Fist. Oh, here you go. <laughs> Big little divisive spaghetti monster. That's what I do. I divide, well, divide and you... conquer. Right. Samuel, uh-huh. I'll be. I'll be but... interested to see hear how you can uh, justify anything about Iron Fist. It was awful. <laughs> <laughs> I have to agree. This was uh, abysmal. No, listen. Iron Fist as a character is already stronger than Luke Cage. He's already more interesting than Luke Cage because Luke Cage is like only slightly more interesting. Okay. Only very okay. slightly the more idea, interesting. The idea that the, like Danny Rand is like raised in this monk school and like he's come to modern modern America and him interacting with like modern day people. They hardly and develop him being it. A monk, no, they hardly develop it. But that initial idea and all those opening scenes of him like being totally confused about his surrounding. I, I quite like. Yeah, well, the and initial also, first episode, like, also, four scenes. I think, like, Danny Rand, he starts off being super optimistic, like, like <laughs> naively optimistic, like, stupidly, like, happy and, like, friendly. And I love that so much because, to me, it felt like a bit like a, you know, like a, a, a Daredevil, not a Daredevil, a Deadpool-like-esque character who was just, like, very positive and, like, you know, like, really full of himself and, like, and, like happy. But don't you think well, that character would have been better established just in the Defenders? Like you have that, you, the the other you, guys, it, and then you have Danny Rand just pop in like super naive and happy and just like well, to we just oppose. 
We could have just had the plot of Defenders without Danny Rand and instead had That's Daredevil true. chase down the hand. Yeah, I mean, he didn't really need to be in it. No. Sorry about the police siren, but... Yeah, no, we live right. in a... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're we after, live in the ghetto. They're after us. Someone reported us. So. Uh, <laughs> no, okay, yeah, no, I agree with that. But like the the only good thing I think about Iron Fist is that idea of that idea of the character is like almost like a four character who's come from another world and doesn't quite relate with what's going on. And also he's got this like weird sense of optimism. And he runs this company, but he's got these like really outdated yeah, Buddhist models. It, it, it's a nice like, idea. It's a nice idea. idea, but it just was not built. It on wasn't. In any it way. wasn't built on. It wasn't executed very well. But yeah, it so, did have. Okay, it so, did have those scenes. So you're giving them an A for trying. I'm giving them an A for trying with his character because I think <laughs> his character is the most important thing. You're so, giving them an A for their their idea, but not for their. A. Yeah, the the and thesis then, is good, but not the not the paper. That was awful. And then. The, the actual, like, <laughs> I think we did actually say, like, I think Iron Fist is worse than Defenders. Well, Iron, so Iron Fist, Fist is, is definitely the worst one. Not only that, because it's longer than Defenders, which yeah. basically means that, like, you have to sit through more of it. You didn't even finish it. I didn't even finish it. That, yeah. to please cut that out, though. We can't let people know that the writer of that, uh, the Defenders episode. <laughs> I'm, gonna, the I'm gonna play that twice. I didn't even finish it. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I, I finished it. Thanks so. for throwing me under the bus. There. That's really nice. Advice on the podcast. Yeah. This is already, us. this is already the first point of contact anyone who watches nitpicks is going to have with me, yeah. and now they're going to hate me even more. So thanks. Um, um, well, no, you you guys keep that... outing me as a racist. I gotta get back at you somehow. No, that's not our fault. You claim you wear that badge with pride. It's not... I mean, anyone who doesn't like Iron Fist is, is a racist. No, anyone who doesn't like Luke Cage is, is a racist. Is, to be fair, though, that is true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, no, there's one thing that I liked about Iron Fist. This one singular action sequence, which isn't even that good compared <laughs> to <laughs> but it was my favorite part of the show. And it's when he goes over to like to fight fight Madame Gao. And oh, there's yeah. that drunk guy outside, and he has the action sequence with the drunk guy. Oh, yeah. That and that was, was good. the one kind of good action sequence. And do you know what's funny? That guy who played the drunk guy was originally going to be uh, Danny Rand, and then they cast the other guy. They, they cast the white Finn boy. Finn Jones. They cast Finn, Finn Jones, Jones as yeah. that. And they, a huge problem is they didn't have a guy who knew how to do a martial arts. Yeah. So <laughs> all the action sequences are real. Like you go from Daredevil, which has this amazing long shot choreography, like singular shot choreography. And then you do Danny Rand, where it's like cut together, like someone with ADHD, like cut it together. It's like cutting everywhere and you have no idea what's happening and no one's touching each other. And then the plot as well is just like Iron Fist is like, I hate the hand. I've got to get the hand. That's my mission. Danny gotta Rand's got to get the hand. I've got to get the hand. Hey, ho, ho. <laughs> He was like an anime character. He was like, <laughs> he was. It's a Dragon Ball Z character. Yeah, I am the immortal Iron Fist. I've got to get the hand. Even though I've never seen the hand, I don't know what the hand are doing, but I've got to get them. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I really did not enjoy Iron Fist. It, God, I watched the whole thing, you know. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think I started watching it, and I think I, I got to like the la- the penultimate to last episode, and then I had shit to do, and then I got home and went, I could watch the last episode, or I could not, and then that's what happened. <laughs> that's exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so Iron Fist is bad, right? We all, I think we're all on the same page. <laughs> so, we have, you, you got Daredevil, and you got, is Daredevil one your guys' favorite? Yeah, yeah definitely. I so, think so. From the highest, just working its way down slowly, slowly to a terrible show, building up yeah. to the Defenders. <laughs> and then we got the Defenders, and it was like a very soft fart. It smelled <laughs> not very good, and it didn't make much of an impact. Well, this is the thing. I actually think Iron Fist is really, like, has just ruined Marvel, Marvel yeah. Netflix shows. Because, you know, Punisher came out two days ago. Yes. Have anyone here seen anyone talk or like mention it or like even tweet about it? Like no one's even. It's not trending. Like no one cares about it, even no. though it's probably good. I don't know. Though. No, yeah, it's I... because we've had a huge, huge flux of mediocrity, yeah. all leading to what should have been the Big Bang, and it was like also not good. Yeah, and so like keep in mind, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, 
um, and Defenders. How many episodes in that, is that in total? How many hours of, is, is that like in total? It's like 60, 60 hours. So that's 60 <laughs> hours that if anyone's held out, they've put, gone through like 60 hours mm. of subpar content. Mm. Why are we going to continue? Like, you've got to draw the line somewhere. You do have to draw the line. And I think that was with uh, Punisher. I don't think anyone's going to watch it. No. Um, it's actually but, yeah. pretty good. I started watching it today. It's good. Yeah, I really oh, like it. it. It's, well, it, there you go. You've I enjoy it because it's different than the other four. The other four okay, felt okay. very similar by the end. I mean, especially joining them all together makes that hard. But like, have they made action good, or is it still janky? Well, it's it's guns, right? So it's okay. it's much more like it, it's it's nothing like John Wick, right? It's <laughs> don't expect yeah. anything like that. But John it's, Wick is. I love that film. It's so good, but uh, yeah. the Punisher. Is not kung fu, and it's not just pushing people through walls. He's actually doing stuff, you know, shooting, punching, fighting. Like it's, it's a very different than everything else. So it, it, it feels more fresh, more new. And I, I just really like the Punisher as a character. So that yeah, helps. I mean, the, uh, the the huge problem with the Defenders is we had Iron Fist as the last thing, and basically Defenders is a continuation of Iron Fist's yeah. plot. Yeah, and it's like. Wants that. Like, I would have rather had the hand from Daredevil season two than instead we get Iron Fist hand, which are really dumb. They're really boring and they don't make yeah. any, like. Can we just say, so, like, anyway, our channel is all about talking about Netflix shows. We thought the Defenders would be the big one. That's where we're going to get most of the views from. So we literally spent, it was, it was oh, like yeah. a month making this Defenders video. We really worked hard on it. <laughs> and, like, we were so happy with the script as well. Like, yeah. we spent ages, like. We spent such a long time. Like pinpointing everything wrong with it, and we called it "Why the Defenders is Just Okay." Brackets, nothing special, and we put it up and just no. Well, first we 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 made it. We recorded the audio, edited the audio all together, had it soundtracked, and then the file got deleted. So we accidentally deleted the file. We had so to re-record. We, we had to re-record it, re-edit it. Um, so like it doubled the process of having of like making the video. It took yeah. us ages. It was uh, yeah. terrible. So many different versions. So many different takes. Editing like all through the night, you know, I was working full time at the Sam, time. So. Sam like goes mental when he's editing. He, like I say, he becomes like a goblin. He stops showering <laughs> and his sleeping pattern like, gets murdered. Like he's only just been able to align his sleeping pattern. He was staying up to like six in the morning and sleeping in till five in the afternoon. It was mental. Yeah. And the Defenders was like the worst for it. Yeah. And then we put the video up and then Defenders was so boring that no one cared about the video. <laughs> Like, keep in mind, uh, like, 13 Reasons Why is at, like, 400,000 views. Defenders is still at 20,000. Yeah. If you guys go back and change it to why the Defenders is the greatest thing to ever be produced by Netflix, <laughs> you will get so many more views. <laughs> bracket sarcasm. <laughs> bracket sarcasm. So it's not no, no, bracket's not clickbait. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. You can actually change the title. Um we changed the title to the fundamental flaw of the defenders, mm. uh, which we saw a little bit of that thing, but like no one saw it, and those that did see it like don't care about it. Yeah, have to like watch a video on it. Yeah. Even my dad, who's like, will passionately be into any- anything. Like I called him up, go, "What do you think of the defenders?" He went, "No, oh, it's all right." Isn't yeah, it? Like, <laughs> my dad likes it. My dad likes the Phantom Menace. Yeah, and even he was like, "Defenders is all right." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, so the defenders. The biggest thing that frustrated me, well, not the biggest thing, the thing that really bothered me or got the show off on a bad foot is the very first five minutes is just Damn black. Man. You can't see what is going on. I couldn't oh, tell yeah. who yeah. was fighting, yeah. and I couldn't yeah. tell who they were fighting once I realized it was Danny Rand. I was like, what is going on? Why would this be the opening yeah. of yeah. your biggest thing yeah. you're doing? Yeah, because that Iron Fist and Defenders basically killed the visual flair of any of the Marvel Netflix series as well. Because like Daredevil, even Jessica Jessica Jones and, yeah. and Luke Cage all have a really nice visual flair to them. They've got good look, and then Iron Fist and Defenders look bland as hell. Yeah, like they're so, so boring. boring looking. With the Defenders, you've just got like the 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 only well, I mean, the main good thing about it is just how they all interact with each other, how the characters are all talking, and like the acting is pretty good, and like the dialogue's not too bad. But then when it comes to everything about the plot, like the hands are so boring, and like 
they're just villains for the sake of villains. Like, the, yeah. the, their motivation, I guess, is to, like, they're going to level New York. They're going to blow up New York. And then never for once are we like, why are they going to do that? Like, <laughs> that makes no sense, bro. And, and like, Sigourney Weaver, like, why... Like she was such a, she's such a good actress, and they like make her Ugh. so um, like underwhelming and unthreatening, and well, like she's just got an illness. I am so I'm like so exhausted of that trope of the boss woman who is just evil, but doesn't like is quiet and seems unassuming. Like I feel like they do it over and over and over, and it's just such a boring character. Like, I don't. Did you guys see Kingsman two? No, we were going to, and then we were like, oh, everyone says it's trash. It's yeah. not good. We, like, it, it felt like Sigourney Weaver's character was the bad guy in that. Like, it was just, yeah, it's awful. Yeah, she just, like, when you've got such complicated villains in these shows, I mean, not including Diamondback, who's trash. Yeah, but, like, <laughs> every other villain is, like, spectacular. Yeah. Like, Marvel Netflix is, like... Uh, some of the best comic book villains, like, again, like, ever put to screen, like, consistently, yeah. no matter what the show is, no matter what the overall quality is, at least the villains were always pretty good, except for Iron Fist. I mean, the business guy was kind of interesting, but he wasn't even a villain. I don't even know what they were doing. I mean, I think Madame Gao was the villain in Iron Fist. I, she was I mean, crap. I didn't finish it. She's <laughs> crap. Madame Gao was crap. Right? Adam, she she's was so awful. good when she didn't. When she didn't talk. I don't know. I've no way she's got force powers. Yeah, she can now. She's now a Jedi. <laughs> Why is she now a Jedi? Well, if I were to change the defenders, Kingpin would have come back as the main villain, being yeah, backed yeah. by the Hand as his new yeah. army type thing. Like the Hand is using him, but he thinks he's using them, and bring in the Punisher and tone up their bring all Spider-Man. their interactions and bring yeah, bring in Spider Man. But have <laughs> have the focus hey, be on me. them figuring out how to work as a team, because that's yeah, what yeah. was good about the show. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's annoying as well that they 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 never like they never like okay, Jessica Jones, you do this, I'll do this, I'll stealth in, I'm Daredevil, I can yeah. be stealthy. Uh, you're going to be the distraction. You're going to do this. Iron Fist, we need you. Like they never, they never do that. And if you look at the Avengers, like all the fight scenes, they are actually like working. They're using their powers yes. in a unique way, but they're all like one team. And like when it comes to the defenders, the fight scenes, we we say this in the video. Like the fight scenes are basically just like Iron Fist and Daredevil fighting exactly the same way, kicking and flipping. And like Jessica Jones and Luke Cage throwing people around. They both yeah. do the same thing. So well, it's like I wouldn't say they do the same thing because the music's different for all of them, which <laughs> I hated so much <laughs> that in the last episode when Luke Cage's music just oh yeah during the fight scene during the fight yeah. scene just, yeah. just turns on out of nowhere was so yeah. jarring. That I mean, it, I quite like corridor scene. Yes. With, uh, when, yeah, and, and then they've got that music going. I quite like that. Yeah, but then when you start looking at that, like the, how they all got there, it starts to not make sense. It doesn't make any sense why everyone's there. It's like Daredevil, like D- Jessica Jones and Daredevil, were, like kind of following each other. Like, what was that scene? What was that scene where it was like Daredevil's? It was like Jessica Jones' <laughs> footsteps, and then Daredevil's following her, and then she hides, and then she starts following him, and then she takes pictures of him climbing up a rooftop. Oh god! Like what was that? What were they? What are they trying to say? Like Daredevil was following her for Foggy, but then she decided to follow him, and he didn't realize she was following uh, him, even though he was following yeah. her. And also, Daredevil has like hyper senses. Yeah, he should know he's she's following her. Yeah. So all I can all I can assume is Daredevil's trying to show off. That's him trying to slay. He was trying to get. Yeah, he was trying to. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my! I can do parkour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they just so happen to be in the building at the same time, and then was, like smashes the camera up, and it's like it's on an SD card. It's probably still got the pictures. Yeah, there. that's <laughs> not how cameras work. <laughs> Smashing the camera is not gonna not gonna delete the pictures. You, yeah. you still get those pictures. You just did something very dramatic, Daredevil, but it yeah. doesn't, it's not practical. Such a drama queen, Daredevil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then yeah, and then it. It's just, it, and then they're not even together for a lot of the show. Yeah, like, Danny Rand gets kidnapped. For like yeah, most of the show, the the like the one fight scene when um, Iron Fist and Luke Cage are working together. I think it's right before they go into that the quarter, the long shot where they're still in the office. I was like, oh, yeah. that's that's what the whole show should have been. Them 
using yeah, each other with, to figure things out, like solving a puzzle together. Yeah, him hiding behind Luke Cage's back, like that was kind of cool. Yeah, and then they just don't do that, like again, absolutely. And and uh, so so we get like two scenes with them all together interacting at all, and then Danny Rand like get, like they they have a little fight scene with Danny Rand. And then he gets taken, and then Sigourney Weaver just dies. And oh, like, God. Electra kills Sigourney Weaver for like no reason. I just I had no idea what Electra was doing. Like, Electra was kind of like, oh yeah, I'm I, I'm sort of brainwashed, but not really. Like, <laughs> and then she's like, now I'm going to leave the hands, but do exactly the same thing as what Sigourney Weaver wanted to and do. And now I'm going to try and get Daredevil back. Yeah, and then it's like, I'm going to fight Daredevil, but really not fight Daredevil. They should have done that in the first episode. Yeah, they like they that should have been because there's there's no reason to keep Sigourney Reaver around for so long because she doesn't do anything, and Electra no. is the bad guy walks, essentially. She just walks she just walks around all mopey and then projects her dead daughter onto Electra and then it. keeps telling people about how old she is. Yeah, and yeah. then like hints at it. She's like, "Oh, I'm very old." You know? <laughs> <laughs> but people are like, "Here's this music." She's like, it "Didn't go that way." And they're yeah. like. Yeah, how did you know about this dish that was made in a destroyed colony? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm old. Maybe I'm not old. <laughs> so why get Tony Weaver on to do that? And then stick his crap as well. Oh, yeah. Stick, stick his is crap. awful. Yeah. I did like when he chopped his hand off, though. That was pretty funny. Well, I mean, what annoyed me about that was that, that this was the introduction of Sigourney Weaver and Electra, like, being the villains. And they just <laughs> let Stick escape, like, straight away. Like, that was the first thing they do yeah. like, as villains. And there's never a sense that the Hand are an, orga- an organized, imposing orga- like organization that, like, knows what they're doing. Yeah, what Which, do they even do? It's like, like, the, it's like night and day, because Daredevil Season 2, there's tons of ninjas up on the roof. Like, that, like loads of them. Yeah. And it's, like, completely dire and t- so organized. And then in Defenders, they're ca- cutting through everyone. No one's a ninja anywhere. Yeah, they're just fighting. Like, they're just, like, punching bags for them to just... Punch. <laughs> They're just punching them all. Yeah. They, you don't get the idea that these are like highly trained, competent ninjas. And like the hands are just constantly going like, oh, you shouldn't be leader. I should be leader. Oh, you shouldn't be leader. I should be leader. Yeah. And just like arguing about who's in charge and who isn't in charge. But we're going to destroy the sissy and get the live forever juice. Yeah. And now, I, I think it was sorry. Dragon Bones. Am I? Yeah, Dragon Bones. Dragon Bones, the cure to immortality. Who would have thought that? I I also think like the whole mysticism, mystical element of the Netflix series just gelled really weirdly yeah. with the rest of the stuff. Because you got all this people like taking care of urban crime, and then Danny Rand comes in, he's from Kun Lun. In his eye magic. And it's just very, very like stereotypical magical place. And it doesn't seem to work very well in relation to everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> I I wonder <laughs> I wonder if if they would have just taken the budget from Iron Fist and melded it together with Dare to, uh, the Defenders, if it yeah. would have been able to be good, because there's not really a reason why it was so bad. Like there there's no reason why it should have been so bad. They had, you know, it's Netflix. They have tons of money. They could have spent as much time as well, they wanted. They put themselves. On this weird timeline of rushing these seasons out for no reason. Yeah. They could, the, the reason why Netflix series are so good is they take time. They, they really let their creators make something good. And now it's becoming more like a normal studio expectation. Yeah. Well, cause I've read in some places and I've heard in uh, like certain areas that they've actually, they hired a new like showrunner or something or some guy who's like taking care of the budget. And he's just much more frugal. Mm-hmm. In terms of how they're spending their money, and uh, like that, Iron Fist and Defenders seem to have just hate, like like be much lower budget wise compared to like Daredevil. It looks like much I mean, lower you quality can, in the Defenders. That scene with the green screen, like oh geez, where they're on the Which... elevator. And you, they're on the elevator in the last episode. Oh the yeah, episode. yeah. You can clearly just see that yeah. there's a green screen. They're throwing people down. And it's just one shot of this guy, like, going, ah! And they're just shrinking him. Like, he's not <laughs> falling. He's doing shrinking. Well, when that, when that guy, because he was, uh, what was his name? He was in 
he was in he was in Daredevil, wasn't he? Yeah, was it no no Nobu Nobu Nobu? Yeah, no, no isn't Nobu the one in in Iron Fist? Yeah, isn't he is the he, no? Is he the, is he the teacher? Or is that no? That's someone else. Yeah, no Nobu's like the Japanese guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah, he no, dies, he, I didn't know it was him. I was like, <laughs> like it was so confusing who was fighting on the elevator. They throw him off yeah. and they like make a big show of him falling down. And then the, <laughs> at, drinking. yeah. And then he's at the bottom dying and it's like, Oh, that was that guy that whole time. I had no <laughs> idea. You want to know something? I didn't even know that was Nobu until you just said that. <laughs> <laughs> what? I only just figured out that that was Nobu. <laughs> I didn't even know. <laughs> And I've seen that scene like 50 times because I've been editing. He's edit- he edited that. That's in our video, that yeah. shot. <laughs> that shot in the video. I didn't know that was him. I just thought it was a random hand member. Well, that's how they treated it. It didn't make any yeah. sense. Because he, yeah. he was a, he was the, um, kind of the main villain in Daredevil season one. Like, he was the guy who yeah. really destroyed Daredevil on the rooftop. And Daredevil was like, I need to get new armor and all that, right? He, he was the one who kept sending like really potent ninjas after him and nearly killing him loads, right? Yeah, and then yeah. he died, but then he came back for Daredevil season two. Yes. And then nothing really happened in two with him. I don't, I don't think. But then he came back in the Defenders. So he's he's had this long arc. The you know it was <laughs> I mean forgettable <laughs> of being quite bland. And then you didn't even know he died. <laughs> didn't know he died. I thought he'd just been hurt in the fight, and he just slinked off. No, he was just on the floor like ah. <laughs> uh, well, that is what happened. He fell down, didn't? But he? I didn't know he fell down. I also like Daredevil sacrificing himself seems to come out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah that that was Daredevil. And like Daredevil season three's been confirmed. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> it was it was confirmed before the Defenders came out. Yeah, so yeah. like a oh, whole way through, I'm like, I know he's not dead because of season three coming out. Like, like I, I, I knew that he was going to be alive. What do you? I bet Alexis how do you think alive. he gets to that? To where was he? He was with a bunch of nuns. He was in like a church. Or a <laughs> yeah, because he's Catholic. Yeah, he's a Catholic. Daredevil's but Catholic. Is everyone it, is that a Catholic magic power? Like, if you get trapped under a, a landslide, you I, just show up in a well, in a church. My friend is Catholic and he does that all the time. So he's always yeah. in crumbling things and yeah. just appearing with a bunch of nuns. Yeah. I'm like, come on, him. Gareth, like sort it out. It's a bit yeah. weird. <laughs> yeah, you keep just going away. <laughs> then Catholics. <laughs> I don't know. I think they'll probably explain. Yeah, I, I, it's probably something to do with the dragon bones and stuff. Maybe. Something. Maybe yeah, maybe. Mm. Though like if he did die and they brought him back to life and I, he's like nothing's changed. It's uh, completely normal. I would this really is a big thing though as well. I really hate that we've got a lot of things now of people kind kind of being brought back to life. Yeah. In TV, it's in Agents of Shield, it's Game in Defense, of Thrones, Game of Thrones, and I hate it because they don't do anything with it. Like the idea of someone being brought back to life from death, I w- I want to see people get really fucked up from that, and like yeah. they become like really vacant and unemotional. And every time the person's brought back to life, and they're exactly the same, it doesn't change yeah. them in well, any way. I mean, the- isn't that what they did with Electra though? Yes, yes. <laughs> and it was it was awful to watch. It was. She was calling. She was so bad. No, I mean, they did, they did, they didn't change, they didn't like change her massively. They just made her they forget. They just made her forget everything yeah. and be a bit confused and then suddenly become evil. But I think what, what Max is trying to insinuate is that like, if you're brought back to life, you're like a different person. Yeah. And that you should yeah. Well, devote time like, to that. It, like John you... Snow in Game yeah. of Thrones is brought back to life and he's exactly the same. And it's the same with Electra. It's going to be the same with Daredevil, I bet. And it's like, I, I, if you're a writer, like, you should see that as an opportunity for character development. Yeah. Like, develop the characters based off of that experience. Every experience a character has within a story should change them in some way. And that's what makes a dynamic, engaging show. Well, it's like, and they just stay the same. Iron Man 3, right? Like, he has the, where he falls from yes. space. I hate Iron Man 3. Yeah, it's yeah, not good. No. It's not good, but the character, Tony Stark's it character makes a huge, yeah. Like that Same. was pretty compelling. The yeah, but his then they PTSD. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess he, he's kind of in Age of Ultron as well. He's kind of like hyper, like, um, like oh, he's trying to make. Up. Yeah, he like he's still he's trying because that's why he makes Ultron robots because he wants to protect everyone. 
as like a, as a result of his PTSD as well. Yeah, yeah, no, no, they, they did, they do stuff with that. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, the the only real show that's done it in like a great way, and this is a bad example because it's not a good show, is Torchwood. <laughs> yeah, I've never I seen. Think, it. No, no, Torchwood is the Doctor Who spin-off show, but there's a character in there who basically he gets brought back to life. And he's basically a zombie. Like his 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 body doesn't work anymore, but he's like conscious. And he's just basically really depressed, and he wants to die, but he can't die. <laughs> he's like a different person. And uh, I feel like you know, cho- bringing someone back to life has got to be a bigger thing. And I think yeah. Electra being brought back to life only to then die again and like be constantly confused is just crap. It's a cop out, man. It's really wish- weak. I wish they would stop bringing people back to life. Like, <laughs> yeah. It, it happens I mean, so it's often. Hella la- it's hella lazy, isn't it? It's yeah. so lazy. Yeah, I think at the end, is it the end of Avengers 2 or just Avengers that they bring back like uh, Agent Coulson or something? Well, he oh, no, he dies the in the movie and then he comes back in the show. Yeah, which means that they in the Marvel Universe right now they can bring anyone back to life if they want to. They've yes. got that tech, and which is dumb. Because Nick Fury almost dies, or pretends yeah. to die, comes back. Like, there's there's no investment in... Marvel, feeling... Marvel's full of fake cop-outs. And then in the DC universe, they've just brought Superman back to life. Oh, God! Yeah. Oh, God! Sorry, we're talking about <laughs> Justice League again. It's so, this is tr- this is uh, terrible. I just want to put this on record. Justice League made me appreciate Age of Ultron much more. Okay. I, I, I don't like that film. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like Age of Ultron. Well, what do you what do you prefer, the Defenders or Justice League? Defenders, Defenders, Defend- yeah, easy. Oh, well, actually, no. like because yeah. the Defenders is a show. Yeah. Justice League isn't even a film. Like, <laughs> it's not even a film. <laughs> You're not watching a film. You're watching like some weird high art, <laughs> self referential criticism, like criticism of like mainstream the comic saturation of comic book it's, movies it is in itself if you go into justice league thinking you're watching either a comedy film like which is like like taking the mick out of itself m- making a joke like being satire or you think it's high art you will <laughs> enjoy it but <laughs> if you actually expect a superhero film you're, you're, gonna... you're in luck you're in bad luck my friend i'm very sorry luck, because that is not a film no word of a lie in the cinema when batman was introduced the cinema laughed everyone in the cinema so doofy. just couldn't stop laughing when batman was introduced <laughs> and it was a packed cinema it was filled with people and I, I, I would have to say, I think I prefer watching Justice League over Defenders, actually. Well, it's a yeah, much it's a, smaller commitment. It's much a smaller commitment. And, like, Defenders is just so grey. It just happens. It goes. Nothing changes, and that's that. And it has nothing to say as well. No, That's yeah. what's really, like, annoying about There's the no Defenders. There's no theme to it. Is it's just made for the sake of being made. They weren't trying to say anything. They weren't trying to do anything. It was like, we have to make this, so let's make it. Yeah. It, they had the they thought the idea of doing it would be cool to do on Netflix, but they didn't have Which a plan to when they got there. They were like... This is going to be so awesome when we get to this point. But they didn't. They didn't plan ahead. They're like, "Well, we got five years, so let's deal with it when it comes yeah. up." <laughs> like, let's uh, let's not spend five years to make the best thing ever. Let's let's wait until about ten minutes before we start filming to yeah, start jotting it's down ideas. A five-year procrastination. Everyone <laughs> just sitting around, like watching their shows, doing their, sh- and then someone was like, "You know, we got to make Defenders tomorrow," and they're like, "Oh." <laughs> really, up, really made a big mistake. They just said Marvel Netflix, and like, we just read the script for the Defenders, like all thirteen episodes. <laughs> they think it's that good, and they're like, no, no, you don't understand. It's going to have Daredevil in it, and Luke. Cage, <laughs> and Knight, and Jeff, and you remember yeah, the I Avengers, understand. right? How that yeah. was huge. We're going to do that, but we're going to call <laughs> it the Defenders. <laughs> we're only going to have like four different settings, <laughs> and. Um, we're going to make everyone a bit more boring. Is that Sigourney okay? Weaver's going to be in it. We don't know who she's going to play. I okay. think we're just going to invite her to the set there yeah. to improv a bit. <laughs> I, I actually have a theory that they actually brought in just a moist towelette <laughs> and let that do the scenes and then CG Sigourney Weaver in. Yeah. And they were like, what's your performance on this moist towel? Yeah. And I like, try and recreate the charisma of this moist towel, <laughs> which she did really well, actually. <laughs> yeah, she did do a pretty good impression of that moist towel. She even looks like a moist towel at some points because of her outfits. <laughs> 
it's just so lazy. Like, <laughs> like there's just this, this the scene with Stick as well. Like, let's go back to Stick because Stick, all Stick does in the whole show is appear. Like he appears. He never, <laughs> he never walks into a room. He's just in the room, and then he immediately starts telling everyone things we've already seen in the other Netflix shows. <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, this guy, he's gonna, he's gonna fight the hand. The hands are bad. I'm from this organization. And we're like, we've seen this. We know everything. And then six again. Yeah. And then he dies and no one cares. Well, I watched, I watched, uh, Daredevil season one. I think he, Stick was in the first season, right? Yeah. He yeah. Was. He was. I watched that right after I watched the Jinx, like almost back to back. And all I could think of was that he, did you, have you guys seen the Jinx? No, I was really confused. I thought you were referring to a specific episode or something. No, no, no. So it's a HBO like documentary about um, Robert Durst. Uh huh. And he like murdered a couple people and stuff. Well, anyway, Stick looks just like that guy, and it was very jarring for me. It would make a lot more sense if you guys saw the Jinx, but yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry we haven't seen the Jinx. It, it's we'll, all right. We'll, you should. Do you guys like true crime? Because if you do... We love true crime. I'm, I'm a massive true crime nerd. Like, yeah. Literally. Every true crime podcast, even if it's bad, I still listen to it. You should... De- like if it. if that's true, you should definitely watch the Jinx. It's... The ending right. is... Is is insane. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Thanks, bro. Yeah. How legend. We got... We've got a best friend here. Yeah. Alan's <laughs> true crime. He's into he's got his own podcast. Yeah, he's got he's got he's got it going for him. You got it going for yourself, man. Yeah, I'm a cool guy. That's what everyone tells me. That's why I do podcasts. Because I'm so popular. <laughs> Is there anything else to say about the defenders? Have we sort of uh, yeah, it's it's bad. It's Not good. Yeah, it's a mess. Yeah. Do, what do you think? So do you think? So moving forward, do you think? Do you think the series are going to pick up? Because obviously you've watched the, you've watched uh, the, Punisher. the Punisher. I think. Well, so think I what I heard is so Disney is starting its own streaming service, and yeah, is in, as well. intending to bring all that stuff over to that after a few years. So I think the yeah. investment into the Netflix stuff is not really going to be there anymore. Just really, so Disney could make that own. Oh, no. Yeah, they're gonna. They're trying to make us hate it. So then they go, look, guys, <laughs> over it, come Disney, over to our stream. So, hey, kids, you like Star Wars? <laughs> you like your Marvel? <laughs> you like Mickey Mouse? You like your streaming? We got it all in one place. <laughs> Unlike Netflix, they got. They ain't got shit. <laughs> <laughs> they got nothing. What they got? Big Mouth. Thirteen Reasons <laughs> Why season two, guys. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. that's Don't right. Don't forget. <laughs> Netflix is massively in debt, like m- massively in debt. Oh, really? Yeah, like thirty billion, like in debt. So. <laughs> I wouldn't be. They're, gonna, they're, they're producing just, a ton of stuff. They've just increased Netflix is like the monthly amount you have to give now. Jeez. Like a very sneaky reminder, like oh, by the way, you're going to be paying a little bit more, and they're going to do that to everyone. So I think they'll make that thirty billion back. <laughs> <laughs> the big, the big, the big thing is, it's just like. Uh, Netflix as a whole seems to have dropped in quality because when De- Daredevil came out, like Netflix originals seemed to have like some weight to it. We yeah. were like, oh, it's original. And there was like Strang- Stranger Things as well. And uh, Bojack Horseman is pretty good as well. Um, and then and then suddenly like it started dropping off. What? And then Adam Sandler got a bunch of Netflix movie <laughs> that contracts. Was the, that was the moment. That was really <laughs> the moment when Netflix went downhill. And what? now we've got Big Mouth. I th- <laughs> and now we have Big Mouth. I think that, that what happened was... In the beginning, they were producing their own stuff. Um, yeah. but now they're just buying things up and slapping their name on top of it. So you have, you, the quality isn't quite the same and isn't. Yeah. It gets a bit weird though, because if you see something like, um, The Good Place or, um, Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency, they're listed as a Netflix original, like on the, on the Netflix site. It's like Netflix original, but it's not. It's like part owned by a company. By like a channel, a network, yeah, yeah, and they do the distribution in other countries, and like then you just don't know what really is a true Netflix original and what isn't anymore. Mm. Have you seen either of those shows? No, bro. Dirk Gently, Holistic Detective is like our favorite show. It's so ever. good, yeah. It's absolutely impeccable. Are you a fan of um Douglas Adams? I don't know who that is. Um, he wrote Hitchhiker's Guide to a Galaxy. Okay, a, yeah, I don't. I never got into that. Um, it oh. was, 
it was popular, but I it just never, I never got it. Like I never understood yeah. what it was about, so I never like read the books. And then I saw the movie, which was awful. Movie's not, not movie good. is not good. <laughs> and so I saw that when I was a kid, and so I never like investigated beyond that. I was like, well, this is just not for me. Yeah, but I mean, Dirt Gently Solicited Detective Agency isn't for everyone. No, it's very weird. It's really weird. Yeah, but it is. It is just basic. Basically, it is just really interesting because the main character, Dirk Gently, is holistic. So that means that just coincidences and like plot. You know, what in a show when a character just so happens to be in the right place at the right time, or just so happens to overhear something, and you're like, "Oh, for God's sake, like, yeah. how can be?" In the show, that's written as part of his character. Like that's his that's, like superpower. Yeah. Is that like he's just always, <laughs> yeah. always in the right place at the right time, always meeting the right people to yeah. help him <laughs> with his case. So that means, as like a writer, because it's written by Max Landis, who's a um, good screenwriter, he just uses that like to have as much fun as possible, and yeah. it just means the story goes like really fast. Basically, okay. like. Anyone who le- like you should, everyone should check out like a couple episodes of it. It's a really special. It's show. on Netflix. We yeah. watch that when we forget what good writing sounds like. We watch that and we're like, my god, this is amazing writing. So it's like, it's like our like it's like a nice lemonade. It's like a nice <laughs> to clear lemonade. out the taste of disgust yeah. in your mouth. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I mean so if after Thirteen Reasons Why we just watched Stranger Things as well, and that was oh, like really nice. Yeah, like I think part of the reason, like, because our Stranger Things video, like, I think we might have gone a little soft on it in some places. And it's, yeah. I think it's partly due to the fact that we watched it immediately after Thirteen Reasons Why, and yeah. we we're like, everything right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Th- uh, Stranger Things is not as good as it, it, everyone made it out to be, but it's a, it's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's another not... plug. We just did a video on Stranger Things. Check it out. Check it out. Check, check it, it out. out check um... it out. <laughs> Donate to our Patreon. Check it out, <laughs> please. <laughs> um, but uh, no, yeah, no. Stranger Stranger Things is is fun, man. I think it's it, it's like better than like something like The Flash. It's kind of it's kind of weird to position, but like I think it's a good show. Yeah, it's a very good show. It's yeah. not breaking. Level, it, but yeah, it's very good. It's it's. I kind of have the same feeling I do with like Rick and Morty. Where everyone's love of it kind of makes it yeah. less enjoyable to watch. But Definitely, man. It, if you can take that out of it, you can. It's it's enjoyable. It's it's fun. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, our friend, he's um, well, our YouTube friend, uh, named Shard Botham. He did this really, really good, such a good uh, YouTube video on Rick and Morty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called um, it's called why why season Rick and Morty why season three isn't as good. And um, we were really. It's like, like it's basically like thirty minutes of him like basically pointing out everything wrong with Rick and Morty, but yeah. it's still like it's fun. It's really well done. It's and just very very good. We watched that video and we were like, oh, we want to be his friend. <laughs> yeah, now, oh. <laughs> just kidding he doesn't talk to us <laughs> uh, I was going to say does he know that you guys are his friend <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> we just talk about we just show people the video and go that guy's our friend you know <laughs> he's here all the time <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah that's also right if you, especially if you think there's some issues with Rick and Morty you'd like the video as well Alan yeah. like it's worth checking you out you give it a sure. thumb up for sure you'd, yeah you definitely give it a like yeah a little like and a I'll, sub I'll let him know that you guys sent me <laughs> your, your best friends over at Nitpicks told me to watch your video. <laughs> yeah. uh, that won't freak him out at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, so if the Defenders comes on TV, what do you? What would you guys do? Honest, honestly, if we weren't running like a YouTube channel in any capacity, I don't think I would watch it. I uh, yeah, I mean like. Obviously, I will watch The Punisher. Yeah, but I am kind of sick of these shows. I will yeah. give Punisher. A also, check because out. you said it was good. Yeah, you, your recommendation has kind of made. Yeah, I'm only two episodes in, so we might just spend all, all of tonight yeah. watching. Yeah, no, Punisher. I think we both silently yeah. just said to ourselves, "We're going to watch Punisher after this podcast." Yeah. <laughs> but if but it's I mean, awful, don't blame me. I, um, I, I will you're blame fully, you. Yeah, you're no, all the blame will be on you, bro. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, but um, if Defenders is on TV, I never want to watch Defenders again. Like, right. ever. Yeah. I'm so done with it. Like, it's so, it's so boring. I think yeah. I'd fall asleep if it was on TV. Yeah, no, it's just, it's bland as hell. And to be honest, like, it's, it's, Netflix is really going to have to indicate some kind of change. Yeah. For me to want to engage with this, but like, I'm really, I'm super done with superhero things as a whole. Yeah. Like me and Sam are 
both agreed, like, after Justice League as well, we both said we're just not going to see any more DC films at the cinema because we just don't want to give money to it anymore. Yeah. Because it's just, it, it's got to a point now where it's, that it's taking the piss. It's not funny. Like, Defenders is, like, this bland sort of grey matter which has no, like, it leaves no lasting impression. Like, Justice League was, like, f***ing trash. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I mean... We hate Justice League. Oh, and, like, it's just... <laughs> But like also even the Marvel movies, I think they're kind of changing things up now. They're kind of going for a Guardians of the Galaxy two vibe with it more so, which is a good thing. Yeah. But like I, I will, I'm not going to rewatch any Phase one Marvel movies. Yeah. Like you know, if I found that on TV, I'd be like, I've seen it. Like I know what I it's about. I might watch Iron Man one. Maybe. Iron Man one is I, I enjoy that one. That, that's probably my favorite out of I think them all. My favorite is Thor two: The Dark World. <laughs> it's <laughs> great. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's 4-2. The Dark World. <laughs> Everything's dark. It's all dark! I didn't, I skipped that one. That's the only one I haven't seen. Cause oh, I bro, fell asleep in the first one. <laughs> and I was like, there's no reason to watch this. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even go see Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. Um, some people said that was good and I, I had no drive to go see it. I, I didn't like it. No. No, it was. No, don't care. Yeah. yeah. I even like Taika Waititi as a director, and I'm still like, nah. Well, <laughs> so he to... has, he's a character in it, and his character yeah. is actually pretty funny, but like, doesn't make any sense in the movie. Like, it's, like, it, they just, they're like, everything is a joke. Like, it's all, it's very meta. But, yeah. You, if you have this giant universe of, like, 17 movies now, you can't, yeah. you can't make a meta movie in the middle of that. And just like, <laughs> who cares just, about the continuity? Yeah. You just take yeah. apart everything that went wrong with it. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's interesting. I mean, I probably like watch it. I just I just don't want to like. I think like we as consumers now we have to like start make we're we're now get becoming more aware and we're starting to make decisions like with our wallets. Like if we pay to see something, we're telling people that we want to see it. When we watch the Defenders on Netflix, we're telling. Well, actually, Netflix will still make. Yeah, it. when we were in the queue for Justice League, I was just like. Max, you knew, you do know that what we're doing right now is we're telling Holly we want more movies just like this. <laughs> he really upset me, actually. I was really upset. That's what, exactly film. what we're doing now. Yeah. We're saying we're, more of this, more of this. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Which isn't and, fair. It should, they should ask you afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get us to pay afterwards? We should have asked and refunds after that film. Oh, we should have demanded tweet, a refund. Let's tweet at DC. Yeah. You know, give me my money back. Because <laughs> that was not a film. Well, I, w- I would ask a lot of studios for my money back, actually, if yeah. I was allowed to. Will you see a Black Panther movie? Uh, me? Yeah. I'm not going to go cinema see it. Are you going to see it? Uh, I I probably will see it. Because you don't, you want to prove you're not racist. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, I gotta work on that, my, my image. Your disgusting comments. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I'm not interested in it right now. Like it, the, no. I saw the trailer for it, and I was like, I don't, I don't care. Like it, it doesn't. Well, like the actors right? are good. Like I, Michael B. Jordan's yeah. one of my favorite actors. Yeah, um, he's good. But I'm like, I'm not interested at all. Um, no, I think the only film I would go. See the cin- go to the cinema with the only film superhero film I'm going to be really interested in is like Spider Man Homecoming two. Yeah, Spider Man Homecoming was good. I really liked Homecoming. I thought Guardians, it was really uh, well, fun. Well, I'll probably go see the next Guardians of the Galaxy movie because yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy two was good as well. It was so solid. Yeah, yeah. Was number two good. was awful. Oh, <laughs> I did not like number two. The racism. <laughs> I like number one, but number two was so boring. I hated it. Oh, jeez. Oh, you like One of our favorite Marvel movies. Really? What was your with it? Should we uh, do this? Should, should we should do this in a different? different yeah, we one? could. Uh, we yeah. could definitely have a Guardians of the Galaxy <laughs> Volume Two argument, although it's not relevant at all. Well, yeah, no one cares. My my issue was I felt like they they took all the praise from one, and they're like, let's just do that again, and that was all they did, and it was just really boring and rehashed. Hmm. Oh, but come on! Uh, <laughs> I, I, That's it, my argument. That <laughs> come on! <laughs> I, I think what they did is they took the ep- the first Guardians of the Galaxy and went like, "We can do more," and they took it further. It went like more crazy. We had more insane space stuff, which was like really fun having them fight a planet. But also because they'd established the characters, it allowed them to like develop them further. Like Guardians of the Galaxy, all their characters are like so, so solid. Yeah, right. and like. It, we're we're getting into this now. 
they <laughs> they took what was uh Batista's character? Um bloody Why can't uh, you? Slicey McDicey. Yeah. Dave yeah. Batista, two knives. He's like, oh, oh the wrestler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, so but he so, was, he had but, one yeah. funny moment in the first movie and everyone thought it was, it was good. And they're like, let's just keep doing that. That really worked. And baby Groot, <laughs> super cute. Let's just keep throwing him in there too. And, you know, Chris Pratt will just Chris Wait, Pratt it all baby up. Isn't cute? You saying baby Groot wasn't cute? There, everything was perfect. just momentum you're, based off the first movie. Nothing. You're talking to two very jaded students, and we were both like, "Ah, oh, he's cute." <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're softies. Yeah. All you need to do is put a baby CGI creature. I mean, the new Star Wars, the new Penguin. <laughs> I'm, I'm down for that. Like, whatever that is, I am, best movie ever. <laughs> I am so unexcited for the new Star Wars movie. I can't even believe it. Like I. <laughs> I, I saw the trailer and I was less excited to see the movie after seeing the trailer. Yeah, me too, actually. It, um, I've been avoiding trailers, actually. I'm, I haven't been watching. I'm franchise fatigued, you know? Like, I'm just so yeah. tired of the same. You know, what, you know what I realize, guys? I think we're all Disney fatigued. Yeah, this, is, this is Disney properties, yeah. and yeah. we're keeping continuously getting Disney properties, and there's nothing. Interesting, but although Guardians of the Galaxy two, we do we like a lot. Yeah, yeah I mean, you, I, you just said there's nothing interesting about it, so that's what <laughs> I'm going with. Got him! God <laughs> damn it! You're out of the game. You made me eat my words. <laughs> I'm gonna step in that thing because I didn't say that. Yeah, so I'll just <laughs> back now. Tag yeah. you. Tag well, you I don't know it. who's even talking, so you could probably just keep talking. <laughs> <to yourself. laughs> I um, I would not be shocked if there's actually only one of you this whole time. Just. That's I'm just switching voices so it can really <laughs> confuse you. And I record myself so I can layer my voice to really freak you <laughs> I, I, I was fully aware of everything we talk about, so I pre-recorded <laughs> some certain lines. So, that harmonizing, you were really impressed with that, weren't you? Yeah, that was part of it. And here's the real wow. big problem. This... I hate everything. <laughs> yeah, no, I hate everything. Confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a real star on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. yeah. I would have dressed up if I would have realized this is I hate everything. <laughs> well, yeah. we're wearing suits. So. Yeah, oh. no, I'm not. I'm good. Oh, I have a tuxedo <laughs> shirt on. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Half dress. Um, but I feel okay. Let's go. Guns of the Galaxy Two is the action's really good. Like the action is really good. The whole arrow scene where it's like flying around killing people in the prison. That is that is all cool. The final thing, um, where they're fighting the planet, and you've got the planet like you know, I hated that. Kind of, um, um, oh come on, it was it was, was more. He was such was a, a bored planet. villain. What? Yeah, it was a planet, and then he it turned into planet. what was his? He turned into uh, Kurt Russell's planet. What Kurt Russell has a planet, and then he gives he gives his mum cancer, and it's like Jesus. That was interesting. That's- yeah, and it's like, that's such an alien thing to do. And he's yeah. like, clear, it's funny because he starts off as this like welcoming human with all this weird stuff. And then it's clear that he is just a planet. Like, oh, yeah. And his dad is just a planet. And like, he wants to just take over everything. But then he yeah. turned into David Hasselhoff, which. Yeah. Yeah. So bad. What? He it was. They were, they were trying too hard to be goofy and lighthearted that it just didn't. Oh, what's, what? I didn't think they were trying too hard. I like, I felt the goofiness and like. It fun, didn't feel like they were trying. It yeah. felt like they'd achieved it. Yeah, yeah. I, that's it. They kind that's of. That's how I feel about the first one, but the second one felt too forced to me. Like it felt like. I, I, my biggest problem with the first one was that like I found it really hard to take the serious stuff seriously. Like the yeah. ending of the first one when they're like, I think they all hold hands or that something. Yeah, yeah. No good. And like we're oh, unifying. Yeah, Power we're Rangers, uni- go! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, I think the music was much better in the first one than the second one. Oh, no, there's some bangers. There are some major bangers. Well, no, the way way they used the music in the first one, I think, was much better. In the second one, it it felt very forced. They did annoy me, though, where they were like, oh, we've got loads of your tapes. And you're like, oh, so he's got loads of them now. I thought that was his only tape. (laughs) Yeah, but talking about the music, the same way he's killing everyone with the arrow, with the song like, wham, bam. Shangalang in the shot. It's so good. That was so fun. 
Yeah, and then all the characters, like, really, they all, you know, the raccoon. Every, everyone cool. had, like, a really nice, good art. And when when the raccoon's, like, building all those little Home Alone traps and yeah. like, killing all the guards. And then fun. every character moment in it, like, felt earned. Yeah. And, like, when the guy dies, and, like, that he, was... like the <laughs> dynamic between him and Peter Quill, and then they're giving him the funeral, all of that, like, felt earned. Yeah. yeah, it did. It, the I'm Mary Poppins, y'all, is the best line in any movie yeah. for the last yeah. fifty years. Yeah, that's brilliant. Like, I, the, I reckon, I, I reckon you'll see it in a few years, and you're like, oh yeah, this wasn't that good. And then you'll be like, you know what, this was pretty good. Yeah, that's it. You're, you're too up. hyped. I think it. it'll I, be I, the other way around. I think you guys will go back and watch it. And be like, oh, and you'll you be like, like Alan was right all <laughs> this time. I, I, I think the difference is, is like what we took from it is like. We liked that it just was totally having good fun, and yeah. it wasn't trying to be anything else except for a fun sci-fi movie with the added pleasure of like just f- f- pretty good, consistent is this, characters. Is this dynamics. episode of the podcast still going to be called <laughs> Defenders? <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of how they all go. Ah, oh, okay. that's all good. Hey, <laughs> we're not we're not really making this terrible. Yeah, we, no, we no, haven't no. made this. No, it's definitely you me. Made, yeah, I dragged it down. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Star Wars, yeah, not hype for Star Wars particularly. I mean, it's just like I feel like they are just going to redo Empire Strikes Back again. Yes. If they do, they, that was it. Is like I look this this is, me and Sam have had long discussions about this, but I think Force Awakens is actually like objectively my favorite Star Wars film. No Rogue One. Whoa! Oh, hang on, are you being <laughs> soft? Is that joke. Are you joking right no, now? No, Rogue One is my favorite Star Wars movie. Sam but, choked on his tea. But, <laughs> I did, I'm English. But a caveat is I'm not a fan of Star Wars. It's okay. It's I enjoy it the most because it's probably the least Star Warsy movie of them all. Ro- the one thing Rogue One did do is it had the best space battle in any Star Wars movie. It I, I mean I think it was really good. I think the pacing in the beginning was really slow and tough to get through. But once it started going, I thought it was a really good movie. Motivations I, I just, were weird. I'll give you yeah, that. I just, didn't I just didn't feel anything. Yeah, I, in, in like the other Star Wars films, I did sort of the care. characters yeah. were like bland like Phantom as hell. Menace. Phantom Menace is yeah, a spectacular movie. <laughs> Underrated classic. <laughs> Qui Gon Jinn. When yes, please. When Annie <laughs> says, "Now this is pod racing," uh, the, when that line hit, I really, I almost cried. <laughs> oh, the bit where he goes, "I think let, let's try and spin." Yeah, <laughs> spinning. That's a cool trick. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try spinning. <laughs> I that when that scene where Qui Gon Jinn's reading Anakin's midichlorians uh, is just touching, and he's like, like, he's got almost the same count as Yoda. Like, wow. Yeah, that's wow. a lot of medichlorians. Medi- that's a god. That's a ton of midichlorians. <laughs> I think that's what he said. He was like, Annie, you've got a ton of midichlorians. <laughs> yeah, they had to cut it out, but that was in the director's cut, I think. <laughs> yeah. You need help, kid. You're you, you're infected. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a disease. If, uh. if they got House MD to come on and try and treat the <laughs> Florians, that would have been much better. I think. <laughs> but um, as an alien, right? Not just yeah, yeah alien, alien house. house. Yeah, that's for what <laughs> we've been a CGI like flying. Like he's got eight drop. legs, but five of them have a limp. Yeah. Yeah, and he's yeah. got like twelve wings, and, and his like, and his ears look like little toes. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like that's how they design a lot of the characters. They just start <laughs> giving toes for ears. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering why there's so many toe creatures. <laughs> now I realize. No, it makes sense. <laughs> you know, they actually they actually scanned in George Lucas's toes. <laughs> It's all, all George Lucas's toes. <laughs> it's a real part of itself in every Star Wars film. A real body part. It's really messed up. <laughs> People say it ties into his fetishisms. What I love, though, is that like you can never really predict like how a fan base will respond to something. Yeah. Like, you never know. I would never, never have guessed that like the release of release of the Force Awakens would make people appreciate the prequels and be like, they're not that bad. They're actually, <laughs> yeah, loads of people started being like, oh well, at least the prequels were original. At oh, least the prequels damn. were trying to tell a new story. Yeah, yeah. The I yeah the Force or what was it Force Awakens Seven was yeah. very disappointing. It was just I don't know. It was. I I did I not think, have I, fun. I think it was doomed to be disappointing because there was so much hype around yeah. it. Because it was like 
Wars. It's like, this is a new Star Wars. And, like, no matter who you are, you could not tune into that hype in any capacity. So you go in, like, and you can't help it. Like, you want it to be so much. Yeah. But actually, given what it was doing and what it was, I genuinely think, like, for me, what I like about Star Wars and genuinely what I think actually makes Star Wars good and memorable is the set design and costume designs and, like, light and like the lightsabers in the set and the world, right? The world of the Jedi, stuff like that. That's what I love about Star Wars. I don't think I ever watched Star Wars for, like, its great layered characters and, like, all those interesting, like, character moments. It's like the action sequences with the amazingly designed spaceships and, like, all of that. And, like, the story is simple enough that you can just, like, like you just want them to succeed. And then they do, and you're like, great, that was really fun. What? And for me, The Force Awakens just delivers all those great action sequences and stuff, like, really well. But also has, like, more real-feeling characters. Ray and, like, Finn, it, like, yeah, feel, I mean, like, Alan's more not real. not a fan of the original Star Wars. No, so, like, yeah. Yeah, it felt like the biggest budget fan film ever made. Yeah. Like, and it's quite good. Um, (laughs) (laughs) the i would love to see a non-skywalker star wars movie yeah me too i I I just because the fact that it's tied into the skywalkers is just a reminder of anakin i just think the main thing is just risk i just like them to take a ton of risks not in a prequel way but just to be like (laughs) (laughs) to be like oh let's make let's make like luke skywalker be like the villain or like yeah let's well that's people are that's the rumor it going around, but I, I doubt they're going to do that. It won't. It one hundred percent won't be that. Yeah. And if it does happen, then we've got this podcast to make me look like an idiot. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, now it's now it's on file, so you can't escape that opinion. That's the <laughs> that's the fun thing about uh, projecting because this is going to come out in uh, January, so the movie will already come out when people hear this, so they'll know right. instantly when they hear you how wrong you are. <laughs> but it will click and they'll be like this guy's an idiot I'm mean, sucked yeah, as soon as this comes out I'm going to lose like all my subscribers <laughs> <laughs> but I think um, I think that like as well an interesting thing people are talking about with Star Wars is the idea of um, what Poe and Finn being like a gay couple like loads of people think that might be the case huh. and to that you just have to look at like China because yeah. like in China, the Power Rangers movie, there's one character who implies she goes, she goes, she says, "Who said I liked men?" And then China instantly made it like 18 rated, like R rated. <laughs> I didn't. So it's not. That. So I don't think it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> well, there was a big uproar about Beauty and the Beast in uh, yeah. America about um, one of the characters being it wasn't even gay, like slightly effeminate and liked wearing dresses or something like that. I don't remember exactly what the issue was, but it was yeah. people were freaking out over it. I mean, there's always going to be like people freaking out about stuff in there. Like, yeah, no, like the moment you put anything in, like, I mean, people freak out the fact that there's like a black character in star Wars. Yeah. Like, there they're were people freaking out, freaking about out about the that. fact there was a black character. Well, in there. Dude, I, 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 I won't. Chime it was, in on it was that. an issue. Yeah, it was, it was my biggest issue. That's why I hated the movie. <laughs> We've ruined your reputation. Oh, you man, I've done it myself. I, I, just to clarify, if anyone's still listening, I'm not a racist. I love all, <laughs> all races. We are. No one thinks you're racist until you say the words, I'm not a racist. Oh, and dang it. Now, <laughs> you've you dug yourself, yourself a deeper up. hole. That, we were trying to help you, man. I, I am a racist. <laughs> and what do you mean if anyone's still listening to this? Everyone's still listening to this. <laughs> this is gold. This is podcast gold. You well, stuck I just, a gold. I assumed whoever would assume that I'm a racist had already turned off because their anger right. built up. And so if, <laughs> if the people who hate me were still rage listening at this point, I just wanted to clarify not actually a racist. When we plug this podcast, I might, I think we might just say we did a podcast with a racist. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. When, I, I think we're not actually going to do that. No, that's, I wouldn't care. I would find that funny. But just name my co-host. Yeah. <laughs> he's the real, he's the real underlord. Yeah, he's the issue. Yeah. He, he's the puppet master. He's actually behind you right now, yeah, whispering yeah. sweet, sweet manipulations into your ear. Yeah, it's like, it's really hard to have a conversation when I'm just parroting and everything he's saying to me. <laughs> it's kind of like inefficient. 
you know, because he could yeah. just do it, but, yeah. Yeah, he's just really shy. He's yeah. a huge intro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I don't do any of the voice work on Netflix. Yeah, he's got a real self-esteem problem. Yeah, I got in front of the mic to try and record one episode. I broke down crying. I'm still having counselling, so. <laughs> All right, well, I guess we should probably bring this one home. Yes. Yeah, on that note. Yes. How can people find uh, you guys? Yeah, you can search in N-I-T-P-I-X, Knit Picks, into YouTube. You can follow us on Twitter as well. We're um, at Knit Picks with a double with, I. With two I's in the beginning. Yeah. Um, and you go, you can find our videos if you type in, like, Stranger Things. If you search in the Insult 30 Reasons Why, which I think is a good starting it's video. It's a good starting for video for the channel. Check us out there. Or why Stranger Things 2 isn't as good. And thank you so much to Alan as well yeah, for having us so. on your podcast. We've actually had a proper romp with this. It's, it's been, been a real laugh. Fun. So, yeah, yeah uh, it was great. Yeah, thanks for coming on. And uh, if you guys want to get a hold of us, you can find us on Twitter at Pod.